Hey there guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. So just a quick little video from me all about how you can prepare in the summer from year 11 to year 12, um, specifically in the subjects of maths, biology, chemistry and English literature for your A-levels. If you hadn't already guessed, those are the four subjects that I embarked on in year 12. And seeing as they're such difficult subjects and A-levels in general are very hard, I wish there had been more resources on how I could feel a little bit more prepared. So yes, that is the reason I'm doing this. I hope you find it useful. I've just finished year 13 and I haven't got my grades back, so I might have failed everything and this advice might be useless, but, um, but yeah, I did get four A's at the end of year 12, so yes, let's move on to the video. Oh, and I know it's a pain, but please do give this a like if you find it useful, just because it helps out my channel, I guess. The first point I wanna make is that your priority this summer should be to enjoy yourself. The summer between year 11 to year 12 was maybe the best summer of my life to date. It was incredible, it was long, it was the longest summer that you've kind of ever had since being in the education system. I went and did NCS, I did D of V, I went on holiday, it was great time. So yeah, I would say don't spend this summer trying to get so ahead or trying to revise stuff early, like there's not really much point. At the end of the day, you are going to be taught everything. Um, this is kind of just how you can feel more prepared or do bonus work if you'd like. But yeah, just wanna say, don't stress. <laughs> okay, so for both biology and chemistry, both of which are quite a big jump up from GCSE, um, I would say the biggest advice I can give you is to get the Head Start to A-Level Biology book and the Head Start to A-Level Chemistry book, which are made by CGP. But yeah, they look like this. This is my Head Start to A-Level Chemistry. Interesting story. Um, I actually moved school for sixth form and then moved back. So I was going into my A-Levels thinking I was doing OCR for A-level chemistry and biology, but no, 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 I ended up doing AQA. So this book is fabulous. Did I just say fabulous? I swear I never say that word. But um, this book is amazing because it is applicable to all the specifications for science A-levels. Um, I'm looking at it now and it looks easy, but I remember when I first read this, I actually read them both on holiday. You know, I didn't make an effort to learn it, to revise it, just purely to read it and to try and get your head around some of the concepts early so that when you walk into those A-level sciences, which are quite challenging, um, it just makes you feel a little bit nicer when you recognise some of the words that are perhaps used, recognise some of the topics. Yeah, so here we go. For this chemistry book, it just has a bit on organic, a bit on electron configuration. CGP do make it more simplified. They do make it, you know, not unbearable to read. So yes, this will make your life a lot easier. If you're doing both biology and chemistry, try and read both the books, even if it's on holiday by the pool and you're just flicking through, reading them, just trying to understand. I think it's a game changer. Oh yeah, and for biology, one of the biggest things about the A-level is um, the number of new words. There are so many new words. And personally, I have quite like a wordy brain. So I don't mind having to like learn and memorize new words quite quickly, but for some people who are more mathematical, um, they might find that, find that quite hard. So yeah, the Head Start book kind of introduces you to some words like polysaccharide, you know? Now that's a word that, you know, I understand fine. But I remember when I first picked up the Head Start book, I was like, what is that? So it just introduces everything a little bit earlier for you. Also for chemistry, you don't have to do this, but I think it would make your life a lot easier because it means you wouldn't have to do it in the first few weeks if you didn't already understand this. So in compounds, obviously each like ion has a charge. So say it's copper two plus, Cu two plus, but there are also common molecular ions, which are not just like copper two plus. It might be a sulfate ion, which is SO4 with a charge of two minus. And starting A level, I did not know that the charge of a sulfate ion was two minus. And yes, you can work it out using the periodic table. And yes, it is good practice to work it out. But for me personally, at the start of year 12, where all of a sudden you had to balance all these equations and seemingly know how many sulfates you'd have for that copper 
you know, it's a one-to-one -one ratio in copper sulfate. How was I meant to know that? Yeah, I would say it would make your life so much easier if you could just learn the charges of the common ions. That's nitrate, carbonate, sulfate, all those kind of ions. I made a poster personally and hung it in my room until I really did not need it anymore because you want it to be second nature. So yeah, I think that would make your life easier, but you don't have to. Okay, so for English literature, which I did drop at the end of year 12, not because I didn't love it, but um, just because I only wanted to do three full A-levels and to kind of focus on them, and maths, biology, and chemistry just went together really well. So yeah, I think it's very, very important that you read the books in advance um, over the summer. So find out the specification that you're doing. If it's AQA, like me, maybe you'll be reading The Great Gatsby or Othello, and although you'll definitely be studying in class, you want to have read it in advance. It will just make your life so much easier. You'll understand the full plot more, recognize foreshadowing, etc. I actually did a whole video on tips for studying classics. Um, if you want to go watch that video, I'll put it up here somewhere. But also don't just read the text you're set, but just try and read as many classics as possible. It's very good to have a range of knowledge of different books from different time periods, from different authors. And a big tip is practice having opinions on the things that you're reading. English literature is a very discussion-based subject, especially at A-level, um, so you kind of need to practice having opinions on characters, on themes, and for me this was kind of hard, not because I'm not an opinionated person, but I don't know, I think I would read stuff and I would internalise it, but I would never... I would find it hard to pull everything I was thinking into a coherent opinion, like an argument that I could say in like a lesson. So practice reading a chapter and having something to say about it. It will make your life a lot easier when you hit A level. Also, you can read about the author's life, the context of the books you're studying, um, that kind of thing, just to get ahead. Um, and it might open up new things in the text as well. Okay, and for maths A level, what a gem. I've got to say, I think looking back, maths was probably my worst, just because I am less naturally mathematical than I am with words and like concepts. Like I can, I can do maths and I like maths, but just, I think less so than the others. So I personally, while I was on holiday, we were on like a three three week holiday in the summer of year 11 to year 12, I found an online PDF version of my textbook. So I did the first chapter of the textbook. I did all the review exercises. I mean, the first chapter, at least for our specification was relatively okay. It was basically just GCSE level with like an expansion of GCSE level. So the only reason I did it was to kind of make sure that I could do maths. <laughs> I know for a fact that I forget how to do a lot of mathematical things if I just leave it for ages. So even if you do no maths over the summer, absolutely fine. And then just the week before do some maths. I think that'll really help you just so that you can get your head back into that frame of mind of maths. Maybe go over your maths flashcards or revision notes from GCSE just to kind of recap things. But yeah, you're gonna learn all the maths anyway. So there's no point really getting ahead, but just make sure that you can still do maths. <laughs> okay, and last but not least, I would say, prepare in general. So <laughs> mentally prepare yourself because these aren't easy subjects and A-levels, I don't think there are easy subjects, but especially not these. Make sure that you're committed to the subjects, that you're not having any regrets with your choices, because I think sciences especially are ones that are often pushed on people by parents or teachers, and some people don't actually want to be doing chemistry. And from my experience, the people who have been made to do it and didn't really want to do it are the ones who, by the end of year 12, start of year 13, they are not necessarily doing amazingly just because it's hard, you know? You've not only got to be kind of naturally inclined towards a subject to some degree, um, but you've also got to be willing to put the work in and to enjoy it. Like biology kind of requires a bit of extra reading. Um, if you're for AQA, you have to do an essay at the end of year 13 in the exam and you can get points for doing extra reading and incorporating that into your essay. So you've got to like it. <laughs> oh, and there's also no shame in changing. Like in the first one to two weeks of sixth form, everyone kind of switches around and stuff. Like my sixth form is kind of like against it, but they do let you if you want to change. So no shame in it. First one to two weeks, make sure you are sure 
about the subjects you're doing. I'd also say get sorted with a revision system that is going to work for you. So they're demanding subjects and especially content heavy ones like chemistry and biology. You've got to make sure you know how you're kind of going to revise them from the outset because if you decide to wait and to not do revision as you go along, you're kind of screwing yourself over, especially because the A-levels are linear now and all your year 12 stuff is in your year 13 exam. You need to be making some kind of revision resource in your freeze or at home, kind of after every lesson or every few lessons. So I didn't really use flashcards at GCSE, they weren't really my preferred method. But the second I hit A-level, after every biology lesson, I would make my biology flashcards and the same for chemistry. At the end of every week, I would recap the week's lessons. Every now and then I would recap lessons from a few weeks ago, especially biology, which is so dense, so content heavy, you have to keep going back over it. And the concepts do build on one another. So if you can't remember the words from chapter one, you're gonna struggle with future chapters. So yeah, just keep on top of it. I also made a drawer for each subject at home. So I have my maths drawer, my chemistry drawer, just so it'd be easy to chuck all my resources into one place for each subject. Also buy loads of folders because you're gonna need them. My kind of system was at home, I had a biology folder, a chemistry folder, an English folder, and a maths book folder, it was kind of just sheets in there. And then to school I would take a day file, I would have a section for English, maths, biology, chemistry, so that all my current work, all the current chapters we were studying, I would have them all in this day file so that I could just take them out in lessons. And as soon as we finished a chapter or finished a topic, I would transfer all the sheets to the home file for that subject, just so I wasn't lugging around four different folders every day. I hope I didn't ramble forever because it feels like I did, but I hope this helped in some way. I hope it didn't scare you. That wasn't my intention. And I also do fully appreciate that it is summer right now and you shouldn't be worrying or stressing or thinking about A-levels really. Like, you guys have worked hard, you did your GCSEs, I'm very proud of you. Hope results day goes really well, which I'm sure it will. And yeah, I hope you feel like you can prepare yourself a little bit more for A-levels if you're doing any of the four subjects I mentioned. Thank you so much for watching. Please give it a like if you liked it and subscribe if you would like more videos from me. I'm actually taking a gap year, so I'll be making a lot more videos about my A-levels because I actually have time to film them now. Comment down below any specific video requests you have about any of those four subjects, like as specific as you would like to be. Bye. <laughs>